serology plays a big role in diagnosis of hepatitis B. This video is about interpreting hepatitis B serology. Really concentrating on making it simple and easy, so that you can easily understand and remember how to interpret these results. This is also a really important exam topic. So, let's get started. Firstly, it is essential to have a basic understanding about antibodies. Otherwise, you will find it extremely tough to understand hepatitis B serology. Antibodies are basically proteins produced by B cells. And there's millions of types of antibodies. Each B cell only produces a single type of antibody. And this single type of antibody only targets a single type of protein, known as an antigen. So, antigens could be proteins that are part of viruses or bacteria, fungus or cancers, or even the body's own cells, in the case of autoimmune disease. The job of antibodies is to go hunting for their specific antigens. And when they find them, they attach themselves to that antigen, and they help the rest of the immune system to launch an attack on whatever that antigen is or whatever the antigen is related to. In the case of hepatitis B, there are antigens that are part of the hepatitis B virus. And these are hepatitis B viral proteins. There are three types of antigens that I want to talk about on the hepatitis B virus. The surface antigen, E antigen, and the core antigen. The hepatitis B surface antigen is found on the surface of the hepatitis B virus. If we find that the hepatitis B surface antigen is in the blood, or if the hepatitis B surface antigen is positive, then we know that the person is infected with hepatitis B virus. If there's no hepatitis B infection, then the virus wouldn't be releasing the surface antigen into the blood. So, you get a negative result. Next antigen to talk about is the hepatitis B antigen. The hep B antigen is found between the core and the surface of the hepatitis virus, and it floats in this space in between the two. It is released during replication of the virus. And remember, E antigen escapes, so E is for escapes during replication. Therefore, if you find the hep B antigen is present, it implies that patient has an acute phase of the infection where the virus is replicating very quickly. So the level of the hep B antigen correlates with their infectivity because the virus is replicating very quickly. But, if a person becomes exposed to that patient's blood, then they've got a high chance of becoming infectious. So, if the hep B, E antigen is higher, that person is more infectious to others. Finally, we need to talk about the hepatitis B, core antigen. This is found on the inside of the hepatitis B virus, on the core area of hepatitis B virus. This antigen does not circulate in the blood. So, it's not a helpful test on a blood test, because it will be negative either way. However, it becomes relevant when we talk about antibodies. So, next let's talk about the antibodies. And remember that, antibodies are produced as part of the immune response, by the B cells coming into contact with antigens, and producing antibodies against those antigens. Just as there were three antigens, involved in the hepatitis B virus, there are also three antibodies that correspond to these antigens. So, there's a surface antibody, an E antibody, and a core antibody. So, the Hep B surface antibody demonstrates an immune response to the Hep B surface antigen. And remember the Hep B surface antigen is given as part of the vaccine. So, if somebody having a Hep B surface antibody, that may simply indicate that they've been vaccinated and they've created an immune response to the vaccine. The Hep B surface antibody may also be present in response to an infection. So, if you have a Hep B surface antibody, you need to use the other viral markers to distinguish whether this is due to previous vaccine or whether it's due to infection. Next let's talk about the hepatitis B antibodies. Remember that the hepatitis B antigen implies that the patient is in an acute phase of the infection and the virus is replicating very quickly. The level of the hepatitis B antigen correlates with their infectivity. But, over time the immune system will respond to this antigen and start to produce antibodies and these are the hepatitis B antibodies. When the hepatitis B antigen is negative, but the hepatitis B antibody is positive, 
This implies that they've been through a phase where the virus is replicating actively. But the virus has now stopped replicating, and the patient is less infectious. Because there's been a good immune response to the virus. Finally, let's talk about the hepatitis B core antibodies. We also call these the Hep B C antibodies. C for core, and remember that hepatitis B core antigens are found on the middle of the virus and do not circulate in the blood. Hepatitis B core antibodies basically show an immune response to this antigen, and they can help us distinguish between an acute, chronic, and a past infection. And we can measure IgM versions and IgG versions of the Hep B core antibody. IgM generally is involved with acute infections, and then IgG wait around after an infection and helps protect against that infection in the future. So, if there is a high titter or high result of IgM version, it may indicate that a person have an acute hepatitis infection, and a low result indicate there's a chronic infection. And, if the IgG is positive and the Hep B surface antigen is negative, it's mean that the person doesn't have an active infection. And if the Hep B virus is not producing the surface antigens, then this indicates a past infection. There's a definitive test for the viral load of hepatitis B. This is where you test for the hepatitis B DNA directly. And this can be abbreviated to Hep B virus DNA. This will give you a direct count of the number of viral copies in the bloodstream, and this number is often referred as the viral load. So, now how to test somebody you suspect may have hepatitis B. When you want to screen somebody for Hep B. First, test for the Hep B core antibody, which will be a test for a previous infection. And test for the Hep B surface antigen for active infection. If these were positive, then test for the Hep B E antigen to see how infected they are and how much viral replication you're getting. And then test for the hepatitis B DNA to look for the viral load and to see how many viral copies there are in the bloodstream. So, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any queries, make sure to write them down in comments section below. And also subscribe to my channel for more cool content about pharmacy and medicine. Thank you.